Hello everyone, welcome back to this game. When we last left off, we arrived in Sebelhan, and it is not a bad place. A few racists, but otherwise, the people here seem to be pretty decent, and more importantly, decently not dead from the Dark Lord. So I was thinking about the situation getting down there. I'm kind of wondering if perhaps one of these people will wind up getting out of the way at some point, revealing a secret passage. Not really sure. For now, let us just go ahead and get some equipment. Oh, this looks interesting. Oh, this is a blacksmith. We totally got a blacksmith here. A hilt for a sword. Being dwarves, I'll go ahead and make the minor racist assumption that they would make a fine sword if we brought them the right hilt. Is it racism if it's a compliment? Shop list. Ground Zero. Heavy blade that not even most dwarves have the strength to wield, but has small explosive runes etched into the tip for added effect. Neat! So, how useless is this sword once those explosions are triggered? Illumina. Long blade that shines even in the darkest of places. Dusk's sixth weapon. Lunar longbow. Fancy longbow that can fire an arrow as far as over the moon. I highly doubt that. Pearl Lance, a most beautiful and sacred spear that without waver can pierce the heart of the darkness itself. Well, that sounds useful. So I assume that we might want to buy each of these. Human sirs and ladies, will you be in need of suitable defense having traveled so far from the north? Ah, forgive mine aging eyes, Elf Lass. I did not see that you are of pointed ears among your party. I wasn't going to say anything. Tessera smuggling, smuggling please. Thank you for noticing when no one else has seen to yet, you gentle soul. Okay. It's a single attack. In fact, all of these seem to be single attacks. Oh, we also have the tomahawks here. I should consider buying one for somebody in Group B, but at the same time, I don't know how much of Group B is going to still be fighting with me. Not until we find another warp point. For now... So each of these is going to be for each of our heroes, correct? Interestingly, the guide does not mention this shop. Oh well, we know that this is good stuff here. Oh, hi Lit! Thank you for the resub! 14 months, that's pretty good. And also super awesome and appreciated. So I guess I'll just buy each of these. Do I go with a Lunar Longbow though? It's strong, like really strong. That is a really good attack power. But with but with this I lose my ability to attack groups. I'll buy one for the sake of having it on hand. By the way, if you happen to cross some fairy, fairly rare materials from Naraka, I and the Muai students you see at the forge over there will be able to forge you some amazing weapons. Though I still would need metal that is rarer still for the blade. Yeah, don't get excited, folks. This is... This... Is where we bring the sword hilts. But we need the blades before we can actually make the legendary weapons. Speaking of which, since the guide is not informing me of the situation with these... Terra Elemental, Terra... Fi oh, the Lunar Longbow is Fire Elemental. 
So there's going to be enemies weak to it, as well as enemies strong against it. For the moment, we can get rid of this elemental weapon and have something that is stronger. Dusk, same with you. Get rid of your elemental weapon. Harrison? Yeah, I think I'm done with your grenade launcher. Have a pearl lance. Mm, that'll do for now. Ryoku Sage Thistle. So, you've met my brother Puck back in Naraka, have you? He always was the best in the business at hilts for capable blaze. It was an art to the fellow. With a hilt made by his hands, I just may be able to make a blade that could match even those demons in the North Mountains with some refined mithril and silver. Timon Limestone. If you had talked with my twin brother Tea Leaf in Naraka, then you might be already aware that I could potentially make a sword fit for a prince with some rainbow metal or a shard of diamond. By the way, I like the effect here of the sword hilt. Technically, that is an entire sword there, but because of how Arbogen Maker handles graphic priority, the tabletop wound up being above the sword tip, thus presenting the look of a sword hilt without the blade. At least mostly without the blade. Now, let's go ahead and get some armor. You say nothing. You also sell the same stuff that you, that the other person sold, I think. Yep, this is the same equipment, so we don't even have to worry about you. Instead, I suppose next on the to-do list is to head to the Regent and chat with him. After I save, it seems like a really good idea to save. Oh, we got an entire home here. I figured we'd have a cutscene with the Regent the moment we walked in. House Servant. The good Regent is upstairs in his study. Please do make yourselves at home. Kinda hard whenever you don't have any chairs or anything. Kinda like a throne. very makeshift throne, a singular chair in this entire building surrounded by a pair of icy pillars. Whatever works. So we have Lord Regent Malachi. Never did I imagine after Lisa's departure from Sibyl Han three years ago that I would ever see a human or a pointy ear in Ferristal ever again. Even in the next 300 years, I might live to be the Lord Regent of the Dwarven race. You think anybody living that long would get bored? 300 years as a Regent. You know, you're bound to get tired of being a Regent at some point. I am Malachi Shallowforge. Please come in. Uh, uh, okay, we'll we'll come in. All right, we're in. You truly have our gratitude for welcoming us so readily, my good Regent. When we've come to Zebel Han so unexpectedly. We were afraid of being unable to get through to Sibyl Han at all, being humans and not even native to Alvenia. I should suppose you should be thanking Fax and his other siblings for that. The Paladons can be so serious-minded in their duty that they scarcely allow a bird to pass over the mountains and into this city without stamping the ground and raising their sores in defiance. Hearty laugh. Yeah, I, I can believe that. Malachi adds an 
as an afterthought. It has been so long that I almost couldn't remember what a human or a pointy ear even looks like before you travelers showed up today. If that is true, then I wish the eight of us could present ourselves to you under lighter circumstances, sir. But we have come because, rather, the four inhabitant races of Elvinia have perhaps never needed each other more than this time. Malachi raises a bushy white eyebrow. Need each other? I am afraid I do not understand, son. To be blunt, my dear Regent, my seven friends and I have endured the danger that we have to make it to Zebelhan because we have uncovered a heinous plot to destroy Zebelhan and turn the Lelians and the people of Feristal against each other. And, I dare say just as importantly, it is also because us strangers to Zebelhan also need the dwarves and demi-humans help in finding a way south to Akavale so that... Sarah slowly gathers her breath. I I'm sorry that I have to make this joke. Even she is running out of breath from the lengthy dialogue this game has. <sighs> we can find the Lord of Darkness and confront him to save Elvinia once and for all. The other seven heroes and the aging regent remain in silence for many long moments. Well, it's, it is certainly apparent that you have endeavored hard to come to our aid on some serious business. I assume there is not much time to spare before this heinous plot you speak of finds its way to our doorstep, so please, let us become better acquainted and have this crisis we may face explained in more detail. You know, it is interesting whenever we have these moments where the screen blacks out and we get all the explanation out of the way off screen. I kind of wouldn't have minded it th that we get reminded in this situation, though, because I forgot that we were specifically told Sybil Han was in danger. I thought we were just passing through on the way to fight the Dark Lord. I assume that this has something to do with Tessera's encounter with Vern, though? You are indeed a brave woman, Tessera. On behalf of every dwarven and demi-human creature of Feristal, I must say that we will be in your debt for a long time to come for what you have done. Not enough gratitude can be expressed for your placing your life in the hands of a Lunis Uru knight like that for our sakes, Lady Elf. I did at the very least remember the whole situation where she was fighting some clones. Tessera responds with a sad smile. It is scarcely necessary to thank me for a deed done in black sorcery, Sir Dwarf. I just wish to show the people of these lands that the humans and elves still care for them, I suppose. Guess the pointy-eared chick really saved the day, huh, Lord Regent? Malachi with, responds with a glance at Boles. Well, I cannot deny Tessera's earnestness if she comes in the company of another dwarf who testifies that he trusts her with his life. And I stand by that even if Elowen himself were to hold a sword to my throat. Here, here. Somebody pull that sign on me, I don't care. I'm going to give praise to whoever I think deserves it, regardless of whether they tell me not to. To Sarah hastily says, Mr. Boles, I believe you have already surpassed your flattery limit for the day. <laughs> Forgive me, Tess. I only meant to lead this grand conversation in a more light-hearted direction. But, with apology to the feather-haired knight for stealing one of his lines, I still meant what- <laughs> I see what you did there. I still meant what I said. Tusk shakes his head. Malachi says with a short laugh, You all are quite an interesting bunch, even for northern folk. 
And it most certainly isn't every day that an Elvenian meets human children from an alternate world, either. I admit that I never really believed the stories I had been hearing in the last few months about a group of Earthlings having come to this world from across the stars. You know, I gotta give some props to this game. The scope of this world is really well presented. Here we are in this Dwarven Kingdom, and it really does feel like we have come quite a long way from the start of this adventure. Even including Earth, th this game has some good scope to it. Very well then, I will alert the village and surrounding communities to the approaching enemy army. Thanks to Zeusatera, I dare say that Sibyl Han has a fighting chance against these freakish elf-like dolls whom she's described to us. You seem pretty confident of your chances, Regent. Now I see how you all are different from the people of Naraka. Dear Regent, please understand that you and your precious people face great danger. From what I have already seen, the Lunas Elru nice to be capable of, these Earl Kings have no doubt been created solely for the purpose of bringing the good people of Ferris Dahl to annihilation. They must be truly fearsome opponents. I agree with you, young lady, of course. I only meant that, with all due respect to human and elven folk, we dwarves and demi-humans live most strongly by the principle of courage and loyalty. I could never blame the Holy Light Knights for feeling the fear that they did upon having to pick up their swords in the face of the Dark Lord's army, but it makes no difference that we face beasts whose sole purpose is to kill. The dwarves are duty-driven to stand against our evil invaders. However, while I accept Sir Bullis's pledge to help us fight, I cannot find it in my heart to condemn you other seven innocent young folk to staining your hands with blood. Even if you say that our enemies are non-living entities, it just does not seem right to ask you to fight. If I may be so bold to ask of for your services just once more after you've already on go through so much trouble, we'd be most grateful if you would stay in town long enough to assist us in thinking of a plan to engage Elowin and the Dark Elves. I would think that, after all the, the adventures that the Earthlings have endured in particular, their advice in this would be invaluable. Afterward, I will be happy to guide you southward to Akavale. Although I must personally assert that I do not condone such a suicidal venture. Not the first time we've heard that, dude. Every Elvenian probably thinks thinks that of us. I am the only Elvenian left alive now who can use white magic, sir. I've come to Sibyl Han that I may not only act as nurturing hands for the dear dwarves and demi-humans of these lands, but that I may use my powers to save lives. I am Sarah Winters, daughter of Holy, Holy Priestess Lisa, and, and ending physical suffering in my brother and sister Alvanians is my purpose for even living in this world at all. Even if it would be to face the Lord of Darkness alongside my Earthling friends, I could not leave Sibyl Han behind knowing that brave dwarves and demi-humans may very well fall in battle, and I was not there to prevent their deaths. Sarah bows to her knee. Please, sir, as a sister Elvenian, I ask you, allow me to be the Angel of Mercy for the people of Sibyl Han in this fight. I cannot put your sincerity in question any more than I could the dear oven ladies, young priestess, but still, I... Malachi stops, noticing the hopeful look on Sarah's face. I understand, young priestess. We will surely be in need of your gracious healing arts soon enough after meeting with the enemy, I know. Sigh. I, too, will be honored to assist you in defending this village against that <laughs> elf, sir. After hearing that he dared to lay a hand on poor Tess, I've half a mind to meet him face to face just one more time. However, Sir Malachi, 
Although I am grateful that you permit a former outcast dwarf like myself to fight at your side, I also ask that you allow both myself and a modest con con a contingent of your warriors to personally guard our white mage during this battle. I have already sworn my absolute devotion to serve the good daughter of the Holy Priestess in whatever way she needs, you see, and so her safety is not only vital to the lives of many dwarves, but to this one dwarf also. Done, Bolas. I can certainly have no arguments against the safeguarding of an innocent young life like Sarah's. Aye, you have my personal gratitude for that. Sarah nods once solemnly, speechless with humble thanks. Now, as to the matter of getting the rest of you across the South Ocean, that is a matter we can make of while I am gathering the other elders for the council. Harper's Ferry is the northernmost settlement mention er, settle what? Settlement Oh, it's a typo. Settlement on on the Aquavale continent, and there is an old mining tunnel that we doors once used to travel under the ocean from here to Harper's Ferry. The entrance is located right here in the village, just down the hill, but was sealed off by magic back when Malachi looks furtively at Boles, swallowing back his words. Boles looks away. I suppose it wasn't much of a haunted mansion puzzle to figure out that I am in fact that man whose past you are about to elude my seven companions to with your story. That is an interesting saying a mansion's puzzle i like that saying i would write it down but i forgot exactly how it was worded but i do not mind so much please continue oh we will we'll continue before we do though i kind of find it interesting situations like this in these old rpgs when we have characters that look alike such as we do here Bolas and the Regent are recolors. In RPG Maker 1, that is a very unique sprite. There aren't really any other sprites that look like that, so recolors are kind of a requirement. It's interesting seeing these old school limitations. Anyway, Bolas has allowed Malachi to continue. I see. Well, without going into much detail as to the reason why the barrier was erected, it so happened that no one has attempted to set foot in that tunnel for, well, let us see, what must be ten years now. A long time ago, an evil curse created by Serena knows what ran out of control in the mines. And while it had claimed hundreds of victims with a debilitating sickness that not even white magic could seem to cure, there is one person in particular who fell victim, however it was fortunate that there was a strange magic pendant that Aldar had held in his possession ever since he had come to Sebelhan two years before. To eliminate the curse, our greatest magicians had managed to seal it inside of Aldar's pendant after he'd finally succumbed to the sickness of the curse and passed on. Ah, uh, okay, Aldar being Bolas's friend. But the misfortune is that, according to the precepts of Terra Magic, it is required that the Pendant's evil power be used to dispel the barrier that had been raised after the sealing ritual in the first place. Well, that is certainly a catch-22. Lynn glances at Sarah. Oh, so kind of like Sarah's mom's pendant when it was used to dispel a curse, only under the opposite principle. Sigh. Well, let me guess. We'll have to go fetch the pendant from a dangerous monster-filled cave located ten days away from Sebelhan and handle the demon-possessed thing all the way back here. 
No need to sugarcoat it, man. We, we're quite used to this kind of thing by now. Your expected cynicism has brought an amused smile to the face of a rigid old dwarf who has not found much reason to do so ever since he reluctantly became the leader of every dwarf and demi-human in Ferristyle, young man. Oh, I was right about the whole doing this for 300 years thing. But no need to worry. The sacred grounds where the pendant is kept are located just a few miles west of town, and there isn't a single demon to have been seen roaming the place. Sure... We'll go with that. We have priests guarding the Asylian Cavern at all times. They will be happy to guide you inside. You can be there and back in just a few hours while I arrange the council. I will almost... Also, notify the armory shop to accommodate you if you feel you are in need of better weapons, also. No, no, no need. We already did that. That better not mean that we're about to get that stuff for free. Dusk bows. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your understanding, especially of otherworldly humans. The dwarves certainly are an honorable people to this one human swordsman. Indeed, that is a rare compliment paid to a dwarf from any human or elf or vice versa. We do not take it for granted, little hero, I assure you. Please allow me to accompany you to the village elders, Sir Regent. I would be, a, I would be much obliged to personally warn them also about the opponent we are going up against. I have endured the dreadful experience of facing Elowin's magical powers firsthand, after all. Sigh. I am sure that it will pose no problem, She-Elf. I also invite the young lady cleric to join our council as well so that she may be acquainted with our soldiers. They will now look to your protection to see this battle through successfully, Sarah, by your gracious pledge. Please tell me we get Sarah back again at some point. You understand, Earthling humans, that, like Sarah, I too cannot go forward from here to challenge the Dark Lord. My journey with you ends here. Really? But we had that whole thing of us finally being banded together and all that. You're telling me that was all just temporary? Oh, oh, thank goodness. Balesta, Sarah, and Sarah have temporarily left the party. 